Yep, we are. Yeah. <laughs> Hi there, welcome back. Nice to see you. My name is Dean. Here we are yet again. Um, Thursday. Thursday. Full slate today for your Thursday as we uh, head into the weekend, a little mini Friday. Uh, we've got lots of stuff to get to. Joining me as always, Lachlan Cross, 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton is where you can find him at Lachlan Cross on Twitter. Uh, and of course, the morning show at Edmonton at 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton. You can listen follow to for a follow Monday morning, uh, which is ridiculous. Can't believe you're still doing that. And I don't even know if it matters anymore because everybody's fucking around with Twitter, uh, which we're going to talk about today as well. Elon Musk is absolutely flooding the zone with crazies. Uh, and uh, some of our guys are hot on the trail. We'll talk about that. It's blue check mark city out there. That's all it is. Just blue, just see a fucking blue check marks. Um, and we'll explain how a, it works because it's interesting. Sorry, go ahead. I, I had a moment there where, because I've told you that mm -hmm. um, I'm going to pay for it because I, I have no pride. And um, people are judging me for even mentioning that I might pay for it. Because I always thought I deserved it, attempted to try to get a blue check mark three times, was turned down every time. People that I know that have check marks have less followers, been on Twitter less. Like there was just, there's no rhyme, no reason. So I, I always had a problem with the whole vetting process if there even was one. For some reason, I always sort of had this feeling that if you did not work for somebody that they had, deemed more like real valuable than yeah. somebody else. Like I always sort of had that thought, you know, anyway, yeah. it, I, I had a lot of thoughts about the verified check. Mark. Yeah. Um, Are you so, going to get it though? Because like everybody wait, that will hold it though, because everybody that, that we work with has them today. It's like the new thing. It's <laughs> like, everybody they all paid for with. it. Yeah. And it was funny because last night uh, is when everybody started getting their their paid blue check marks, right? It's like you could sign up for Twitter Blue as part of Twitter Blue, which is like nine ninety nine a month or eight bucks a month, depending on what country you're in or fucking Ankara. I don't even know where what country you live yeah. in. It doesn't matter. But if you give Elon Musk eight bucks, he'll give you a little verified thing and you get Twitter Blue, which is a paid subscription service where you get access to a couple of different features, 1080p. Uh, you know, bookmark sorting. I don't know some other shit. Longer videos of the ten minutes you can post, which is fascinating. I guess if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Um, and it seems to be the excuse that everybody uses to say that that's why they got the blue check mark. But you could, you don't have to put the blue check mark up if you get blue. You can still use it instead of also using the check mark. But this is just Elon's way of saying to all the blue check marks, "Hey, fuck you! I'm gonna screw around with you for a while." And it is like. It's literally mayhem out there right now. Like, just absolute mayhem. Let's look at some people we work well, with, including and that's... our friend Callum. Callum got this. Uh, he's got significant follower account. I think he's got about 20,000 followers. He's super, super funny. He wanted this because he does these long-form videos, like 10-minute videos, right? So he's like, boom, I'm going to get Twitter blue, and he gets a check mark, And he doesn't care because he's him, which is fine. I don't care. I think it's great. Uh, let's have a look at a couple of other ones, like Ryan Lindley. We work with him as well. Boom, verified account. He went and paid his $8. Not done there. Sheep King JB. Boom, this account is verified because it's subscribed to Twitter Blue. Um, not done there. <laughs> uh, Nintendo of America. This is where things get dicey. <laughs> Someone named Nintendo Doofus. That can't be decided. real. <laughs> it is. It's oh. totally real. Oh, uh, <laughs> so that pissed off Nintendo. all the Nintendo. Nintendo fans yesterday. <laughs> uh, not done there. How about Jesus uh, Christ? He's got his own handle too. Carpenter, healer, God. Uh, I actually followed Jesus account. for a while. I don't, I don't know if oh, he ever great. followed Jesus me Christ. Down. Yeah, you, you can follow him at Jesus. He's now verified to be the Christ, apparently. And, uh, and his first tweet. Yeah, it's his first tweet. Who has two thumbs and verified? Jesus Christ, that's who. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bananas, dude. He's and everybody's like bananas. losing their minds. It's the only thing people are using are parody yeah. accounts. Big Elon Musk fan joins us now. Scott Trades from the Hot Wallet podcast. Turns out there he hey is. Hey, guys. There he is. Hot Scotty Trades. 
Um, what do you make of the, the, the Twitter verification rollout? I just put your tweet up because we were like mocking Ryan Lindley last <laughs> night, like just mocking him because he was like, I'm never getting it. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's got the blue check mark. And I was I was like chastising people last night where I said, yeah. I can't believe how many fucking people I work with have a blue check mark already. Like it was like and, and I just assume nobody here would do it because we're full of common sense or we like to say we are. But Rye paid for his. And he's like, I can totally do whatever function you can do now, plus my use. And I kind of like the troll job. But uh, Scotty <laughs> jumped in and he's like, yeah, but you paid eight bucks. So what do you think? What do you think of the rollout so far? Well, I mean, I'm mad. I did, you know, I pay the subscription fee. I don't have it yet. So I don't know why Ryan's so special. I think I have more followers. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm not verified. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I think it's great that Ryan's that's why, finally paying that's why I'm not Elon. Honest. You know, he hates all. Oh, I hate Elon Musk, but here's my money. Please give me my check mark, <laughs> sir. You know, come on. For someone who bashes Elon Musk every second I'm on the podcast, here's my $8, yeah. sir. Can I have my little picture yeah. beside my name? Yeah, come he's going to have to suck on that. Jeez. <laughs> You know, he's gonna so, have to suck on at that. At least, at least, if I get the blue check mark, I'm fine paying Elon. You know, I'm yeah. good with it. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, me and E. That's <laughs> right there. Yeah, yeah. I, you so, know what? It's funny because yeah. I forgot about I, it, and, and I'm like, similar I tweeted the when I, I saw that lens, that lens verification lens status in yeah. our DMs. <laughs> I, had this, I had a very similar thought. I was like, I heard you talk about Elon, like he is the dumbest guy on the planet. And just yeah, stumbled I, into all this wealth accidentally, had nothing to do with anything that that he did, right? Yeah, it was just he's a moron. Uh, anybody can do it. And I'm like, really? Uh, I'm just, well, yeah, I'm just, just saying. At least I'm consistent in his it. pocket. What's that? You know, Scotty? at you least. Consistent? Sorry, sorry to cut you off, Lock. At least I'm consistent with it. Mm -hmm. You know, at least I'm consistent. Ryan's like all up and down. So he's so hot and cold with Elon. I hate you him so this, much, right? but here's my money. It's like those people who stand outside Tim Hortons and say how bad their coffee is, but they drink it anyways. <laughs> that's that's, that's Lynn's. That's Lynn's. <laughs> well, I'm saying. It's all over Hortons. <laughs> and he gets one every morning and sometimes yeah. a honey crueler to boot. He's a conundrum. You know that what I love about it, though, is because last night after everybody, all the blue ticks started showing up in my feed. It was like, oh, Lynn's got one. I was like, oh, this is crazy. And then JB's like, hello to the blue check mark. And then Callum comes in with his blue check mark. And then Ray, our sports director, is like, nine ninety nine, bitch, suck it. I'm verified. <laughs> and I'm like. I, I can't even be mad at these guys. It's so fucking funny. But the, the irony of it, as you point out, and I didn't even think about the hatred that Ryan has spewed at Elon Musk for all of oh, his fucking side gigs. And all of a sudden, there you go. Ryan's like, here's my $8. Take <laughs> it from it me now. <laughs> well, I mean, is me, he not getting verification at home? Is there something missing from his no. life? No, you I know, think he gets like, lots of it. He's and he's a beauty. He's one of the greatest guys in the world. You know what I think? I think for there are some people who secretly pined for the blue check mark. I think there's some I people have. that were like, "Fuck, I really." Want I admitted it freely. I don't know why people don't just go because I've always wanted one because it makes me feel important. Like just fucking say yeah. it. Like you know what I mean? Like just don't don't. And everybody's doing this one. I only got it for the longer videos. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was mad at people that I didn't think deserved it that had it. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit it. I, I was very petty about the whole thing. Like people yeah. keep bringing up the status symbol. It's, it's a, not a very important status symbol. But I, yeah. I was like, yeah, but the, why do you have it? Then let it go. Tell yeah. them you didn't want it because you had to actually jump through some hoops to get it. I know you did because you got it. And I went through the process of trying to get it and I didn't get it. That's so right. the vetting process pissed me off. I was angry at the people that had it. And when I found out that there might be a chance that it might actually make my stupid tweets climb Better. higher in the feed, yeah. I was like, maybe I'll do this. But I'm a little bit concerned. He fired three quarters of his staff. I th think Twitter is lucky to actually still even be live right now. So I'm not going <laughs> to give him money Dude. right now until he sorts his shit out. I'm Dude, like, I literally, see? I left myself a note, get Twitter, look into Twitter uh, check mark in yeah. January. I'm going to give him a couple of months here. 
to sort yeah, his shit just sort it out dude we've got a yeah. bunch of changes coming up and we had a meeting today and they're like okay what do you want to do with your twitter accounts so i'm like guys maybe we shouldn't touch them right now maybe we should just like it's like that flappy bird analogy that you mm-hmm. use if you had an original check mark you're just gonna hang on to it and, and and pay your eight bucks a month because part of the deal is, is and i fucking find it fascinating is if you don't have one if you don't subscribe to twitter blue and you don't it's not even the blue check mark. If you don't subscribe to Twitter Blue, effectively everybody on it gets shadow banned. So if, if the only way for people to see your stuff and for you to get to the top of different lists and for you to be act, the algorithm to work for you at its at its premium is if you have one of these blue check marks, which is the opposite of democracy. It's the total mm-hmm. opposite of it. This is like no 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 no. Just if, give me your money and I'll put you at the front of the line. It's fucking awesome to watch. Like it's like, and you got so many people out there going, Elon's well, the democratizing it. And you're like, do you, but do you understand what he's saying? Here? Like, do you understand what he's doing? What he's doing is the opposite of that. And he's making people force him, force them to pay him so that it can work for you. It is brilliant if you own it all, which he does. But here's the rub. You got about seven ma- major foreign governments that have chipped into the $44 billion purchase, including the Saudis, including Qatar, including UAE and people from a couple of sketchy countries. So yesterday, Joe Biden does this one. They're like, what do you make of his purchase of Twitter? He goes, well, I got to tell you, I have to have a chat with him about uh, some of the foreign government stuff. So stay tuned. And he had this like sly look on his face. So I'm like. All bets are off when it comes to the tweet skis now. Like, I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. He is too big. He is too influential. He's fucking around like crazy with Twitter, which I happen to be enjoying. It's like that kid on the swing in that meme where the kid's swinging and there's a fire in the background. He's like, oh, this is a lot of fun to watch. That's me. I'm the kid on the swing now. That's that's well, what I am. Here's it. Here's something interesting. And this is this is probably something we can have a conversation with Scott trades about. I, I read yesterday. He, in the last year, has lost half his wealth. Half. He's still the richest man on the planet. (laughs) Isn't that crazy? What a dummy. (laughs) He must be a complete moron. (laughs) I I understand he's weird, and I get that that he's pissing people off. And now everyone wants to do the Trump thing with him. Have you seen a picture of him where he doesn't look like a complete lunatic? No. In the last three months? No. Every picture they show of him when it's not in his control, he's either looking like he's on his way to get somebody to shit on his chest or just got out of a room where someone shit on his chest. They could just, it's not, it's, it, 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 there's well, nothing flattering it. about Elon Musk right now. But I don't, I, and again, it's hard to we kill our heroes, the guy. Dude. We kill it's our hard heroes. To defend the guy, right? Like yeah. y- y- you're sitting there, you're, you're going, yeah, uh, he can't be that dumb though, right? Like he look what he's done. Like he has changed the world that we live yeah. in. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, and not just the world we live in, but outer space, which no one knows nothing about. He's <laughs> changed that too, right? Like he's changed air travel, space travel, <laughs> car travel, train travel. Uh, tunneling travel he's changed fucking so much he's revolutionary but this is different um and to that point scott uh what's twitter stock like and what is twitter stock doing to tesla stock because my understanding St- scotty by the way at scott trades is where you can find him stockmarketmentor.com uh he's a financial educator he's got a great uh, podcast called hot wallet which is on the shelf we'll get to that in just a second <laughs> but I think, oh, oh, that's I'm why tired, you're here man. i know it was a tough I'm day yesterday i've been tired dan I know. <laughs> by the dip i need a um, rest but like what is what has this done to his other businesses because his tesla stock price is in the toilet like t well it's in the toilet because he's selling that's why like yeah. uh, you know he's selling the stock so he's he sold i think four billion dollars worth of the stock the other day and so he is the sell pressure he is the sell side and then on top of that because it's been under underperforming the market you get short sellers piling on to that so it pushes it down even more but here's my question elon musk lost half of his wealth Yet we didn't catch up. So who are the real idiots? We didn't catch up. He lost Us? half. Us? We had a chance to kind of get closer to that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not any closer. 
I don't know about that's you. That's different. That's a different <laughs> world, though, dude. That's a different world. Yeah. Can we get into? Um, can we get into this email that you're sorry, this tweet that you put out yesterday? Yeah, sure. you, I wanted to. I, I wanted to do a it, wellness a check on you. Them. Well, I know, but like this is wellness check kind of material okay. for you because you're so positive. Locke was talking about it. You've been a yeah. cheerleader for Bitcoin, cheerleader for crypto, talking about hot wallets, talking about uh, ShakePay, talking about FTX, mm. Luna, talking about BTC, talking about Doge. You've been like a big, and you're you're always positive about new opportunities yeah. and keeping up with new technologies. We love it. You've been in several fights with Ryan Lindley, who's who we've <laughs> called, mercilessly made fun of because of his fake blue check mark today. Which so you know that that part of this this is done. Uh, but this tweet concerned me. I wanted to, and I actually checked on you yesterday. I'm like, you okay, bro? <laughs> so this is the tweet. <laughs> yeah. I don't get too personal on here, but the events in crypto recently have really shocked me. Uh, this feels like a real moment in time. You think these smart people have the industry's best interest in mind, and it turns out they just wanted influence, power at any cost. I find that that's I find it interesting that that's new to you, but whatever. Uh, then you said I never owned Luna. Didn't have FTT. I only used FTX a handful of times. Didn't have any money there. Sam and everyone involved should be in fucking jail. I added the fuck. Uh, how about we build a new system that's actually better for people and not just shine a new turd? This is in reference to a collapse, another collapse, a cratering, if you will, in crypto yesterday. Here's the big board. A lot of red numbers. The one that really concerned a lot of people is Bitcoin, the industry standard. Fell twelve and a half percent, and and the price yesterday was sixteen thousand. I know the baseline was nineteen thousand, nineteen twenty thousand. I think a lot of people had that number there. But if you look at this, everything is worth less. Not worthless, worth less. Some of it is worthless. What did you mean by your tweet? And what the fuck happened yesterday? So, well, Never let's can. just clarify that, that was yesterday's prices. Everything is up a lot today. Ethereum's oh. up 17%. All right. Bitcoin is back up above 17,400. So we, we did have a big reversion to the mean today. You're so positive. You're uh, so based positive. On, <laughs> I know. I have to be. Based on uh, the CPI numbers. So the CPI numbers for the United States, that's the inflation number yeah. that the Federal Reserve uses. Those numbers came out and they came out below expectations. So they were looking for 7.9% inflation. We actually got 7.7. .7. And so the market likes that. And the market rallied today. Behind me is a chart of the S&P 500. And we're hitting, uh, we're hitting uh, some pretty good levels here uh, on the market. And then, you know, we're getting a little short covering rally in, in crypto as well. So, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, once again, a long, complicated story on what happened between uh, you know, in, in the crypto world. And do you mind if I tell the story, Dean? Please. Because it is it is quite long. And I want to start with, you know, really talking about Sam Bankman-Fried. So Sam Bankman-Fried is the Sam that I had referenced in that tweet. And, you know, he started a quant trading firm called Alameda Research in, in uh, 2017. And then in 2019, started this exchange, crypto exchange called FTX. And he made a lot of money initially doing arbitrage trading. So he would buy and sell Bitcoin in different places. He'd buy it in America and sell it in Japan. And he did that because there was a difference in the price, a difference in the spread. And the difference was so big that at one point he was making about a million dollars a day doing this trade. And so he, you know, a smart guy came up with uh, the FTS, Is this him? Uh, FTX Is this him? exchange. That's him on the left, Sam? That's him? Uh, that's right. Yeah. And that's his, his business partner in FTX, Tom Brady, correct? That, yeah yeah okay uh, yeah <laughs> it's Continue. one of them and okay. so th uh, they ended up getting a ton of funding you know in uh in 2020 they raised about 900 million dollars from SoftBank, sequoia capital and even uh the family office of uh paul tudor jones who's one of the greatest investors ever his office people that run his money invested into ftx then in 2022 they raised another 400 million at a 32 billion dollar valuation they brought on some of these sponsors they brought on Tom Brady, Matt Damon. They had the Super Bowl commercial with Larry David. You know, he's on CNBC. He's doing. Was oh, that that uh, Matt interviews. Damon commercial? Sorry, that Matt Damon commercial where he's like, uh, "The fortune favors the bold." That one. I th I think that the, I think that that is FTX as well, or maybe it's Crypto.com. I'm okay. uh, now that we say it out loud. That was Crypto.com. Was it okay? But yeah. uh, you know, so Burned celebrities are getting involved, and and so FTX was looking like a real big deal. I mean, they were naming 
arenas, the FTX arena in Miami, uh, you know, the FTX logo. You're seeing that all over Major League Baseball on mm -hmm. the umpire's jerseys. It's FTX. That's the exchange. <laughs> and so, you know, as the growth of this company is coming, uh, Sam is influencing regulators. You know, he's on Capitol Hill talking to regulators, trying to construct some of the regulations when it comes to crypto. But the wrong turn that he made was that while he was trying to make some of these regulations, he was also lobbying against another exchange. And word got out to that exchange uh, that Sam was trying to cut them out of some of this U.S. regulation and really getting U.S. regulators to target this other exchange called Binance. And so, uh, you know, a Coinbase, uh, sorry, Coindesk article came out and said, you know what? There's a weird relationship right now with Alameda Research and FTX. So the, the prop trading firm that Sam runs and the exchange. There's something weird going on between those two. And what was happening was with the Terra Luna crash, turns out FTX was probably also insolvent, but they covered it up and they covered it up by loaning each other money. So it looked like they had money, but they didn't. And so all of this value was tied into this FTT token. And the mm -hmm. Binance, the guy from Binance found out about this, well, at least we think, found out about this and said, you know what? I actually have $2 billion worth of FTT. I think I'm going to sell this. And he puts this out on Twitter. And if you are an active investor and you know that a $2 billion whale is coming to sell this token, what are you going to do, especially in a thin market like this one uh, exchange token? You're going to sell it. You're going to short it. You're going to do whatever you can to, to you know, get, get up ahead of this big whale of $2 billion of token that's coming to the market. And so that started happening. And then what happened is FTX tried to support their exchange by selling off all of their other cryptos. They sold off Solana, their Bitcoin, and all these other things to raise money to try and you know, fill the gap. And the gap was so big that at one point they actually went to Binance and said, we need you to buy us so that you can get us out of this trouble. So the guys that they were trying to screw over, they ended up going back to and then saying, hey, can you please buy us? We'll sell it we'll, for a dollar. Will you buy us for a dollar? Because then Binance would be on the hook for all of these lost, all of this lost money. And so today, just hours ago, it came out that Sam Bankman Fried is now looking for $10 billion dollars to save FTX. And while this is all happening, of course, everyone is selling their tokens because they're like, oh crap. He's you know, nothing. Alameda Research is a big market maker. They have coins all over the place. They're going to try and raise money. And so that's causing mm. this big cascade of selling in crypto. And so we get another person who the market thinks is like on the right side. I mean, this guy was working with regulators, Dean. He was on Capitol Hill. And at one point was worth this like, guy, you know, this guy yeah. it looks like he just finished masturbating, playing a, a <laughs> few hours of Call of Duty. That guy three days ago, yeah. he was one of the richest people in crypto. That guy drinks of out of a uh, carton. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, a net worth of about 16 billion. Yeah. And today, you know, it's, he's probably bankrupt today. So within just a couple of days. So oh the hubris can I, of can I wait and in the here? ego of this yeah. guy. You know, really kind of got in the way. So sorry to cut you guys off. Sorry for the long story, but it it I really has it. been a, a a real life Game of Thrones in terms yeah. of one guy saying, "No, you can't take us down," and then this other guy saying, "Well, you know what? I just don't like what you're doing." And then who bends the knee to the other? You know, the guy who basically was bashing him behind their back. Fuck it. This is this is an important. It's amazing. Lesson. Like it's amazing. This is like fire festival shit. Like it's like oh, if, yeah, if you yeah. wanted to see a documentary on this story lock, I just wanted to quickly jump in real quick. It, it's what you're talking about is a complete house of cards, right? In FTX, yeah. Yeah. you're talking about shuttling money between exchanges so that when there's a margin call, oh guys, got to fucking take my money, no problem, we got money. And then someone comes and looks at your and they're like, you got all this money. They're like, yeah, but you just borrowed money from a friend of yours to make it look like you were financed and that you were all good. And then when they go and look at your buddy, you send that money back and they're like, okay, good. You're covered. We got it. They have nothing. They have nothing. Yeah. So what you're saying is, and, and that, that was the impetus for that tweet, which you were pissed off. Did you lose yesterday? Is that why you sent that tweet that made me yeah, do a wellness check on you? Yeah. Like, well, I mean, I have long-term holdings, right? Like I have things that are locked up in smart contracts that I can't touch for years. And so yeah. those, you know, those obviously lost value, but it, it was really just, um, you know, you, 
this is someone who we should be able to trust. You know, he's put in a put in a, a position of trust being on TV in front of CNBC, talking to regulators and, and whatnot. And it turns out that he is just as criminal as Bernie Madoff or, you know, the people who ran Enron. And so that to me, it just felt like uh, I was I felt let down by someone who should be, uh, you know, a white knight of the industry. And so that was really, you know, my my personal plea there was just like, geez, can we just get people who like give a fuck about Bitcoin and aren't just trying to rape everybody else and steal everyone's money for power and influence? You know, and so that was kind of my yeah. frustration out of that. Yeah. Fuck. I I, I want to weigh in here because I've I've made this comment for for years and I've I've waffled uh, a couple of times like when somebody talked me to get it talked me into getting into bitcoin and I thought I'd give it a try and I I'd like I stuck my toe in and and I and I realized after having like a couple of hundred dollars in it and and watching it constantly that this is not the game for me so I I I got out and I I didn't lose anything I think I literally I think I I think I lost forty dollars or something because I, it was up and down, up and down, up and down, and finally I just said, I think I sent Scott a note and I just said, is this worth it? And you, and I think you said something like, if you're not in it for the long term, you should you should just get out. Mm -hmm. And 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 it was I I realized how pointless it was getting advice on crypto when you're dealing with a couple of hundred dollars, I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I, but I'm, I'm so wrapped up into this for very little money, but yeah. I've said this for years. And, and, and again, it's worth saying, and, and I know you hate hearing this Scott, but you can't trust anybody in the world when it comes to money. And you definitely can't trust anybody in the world when it comes to any kind of trading. And the reason is, is because they they basically prey on people. They need all the sheep. They need all the people to fall off the cliff. And that's how they make their millions and millions. So if you just stop giving them your money, they're going to go away. And, and, and again, I understand that people are successful at this and I understand, but you got to be a Scott. You have to be somebody that gets up brushes his teeth, shakes his dick, grabs a cup of coffee and sits in front of fucking eight screens. A bit of a dick shaker. And does this all day. All day. I yeah. pay someone for all that. day. If you aren't doing that, anymore. get out. Stop <laughs> yeah. being a pawn in the game. But that's because what happens. That's how people lose so much every, money in this too. Everybody is just casual a pawn. shit. You are yeah. a pawn in this imaginary money thing. Put your money in something that you can see, that you can touch, that Drum has a trade. goddamn door name, a doorknob. Yeah. <laughs> like, get out. The yeah, only like way Kmart to do this or Sears, you know, one of yeah. those places. Wolco, get, get out. Stop Target. giving your money to these people that just. Fuck you. Well, I'm here's the thing too. Stop you. giving your money to guys that look like this who say they figured something out when, when they clearly haven't. I mean, here's a question I have. First, it's Sam Bankman Freed. He's one of well, let's have a look. That was FTX. Where is that? Where's my boy FTX on here? It doesn't matter where FTX is anymore. Who gives a shit? What about the rest of the people that run these accounts? I know you've got the Criminal. US fund. Uh, the dot USD, you've got Doge, which is just basically zero now. It's bank. zeroed out. Like if Sam, if, if you said that about Sam banks, and he was in it for influence in and all the other bullshit, here's a question I have for you. How many assholes run those funds as well? Those exchanges? How They're many? All, all of them. Well, you, like, is this going to crater? Every, like, is everybody just going to apply the same lens? Like, these guys are just a bunch of fucking incel losers that figured out how to scam people. Like, that's kind of what it feels mm -hmm. like this morning, does it not? And how well, do you feel about the rest of the people that head up those other exchanges? Well, and that's the reason that you have people who are Bitcoin only, because there's no one in charge. There's no one guy at the head, at the top, that says, I control all the Bitcoin. You know, it really is a free, open 
market. Now, of course, the more money you have, the more of Bitcoin you can move around. But that's one of the reasons that you have Bitcoin maximalists with the laser eyes that say, screw all these other shit coins. Bitcoin only because I know no one can let me down. There's no one person that has control of it. And that's that. And so, uh, you know, but I appreciate what, what uh, Locke is saying completely. Like if you if you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't be playing the game because you are playing against some of the smartest people in the room. And with FTX and Alameda, what uh, is now coming out is that Alameda, the research group, was actually trading against people who were on FTX because they could see everyone's orders. They could see the big money come in. They could see where everyone's clicking and everything like that. And so they could trade against it. And that's how they were able to generate uh, so much uh, income. It's because, mm-hmm. oh, they know that Dean just moved 100000 into USDT and he clicked here. So chances are he's about ready to buy Bitcoin. So we should short that so that he gets crushed and then sells right away. Then we can make the other side of that. And so, you know, there's a lot of uh, shadiness. And, and so Locke's right. If you're not in it and you can't follow it, you got to get out. And, uh, you know, and, and I'll be honest, like these last few weeks, the whole market has been exhausting. You know, even the normal stock market, which has just done this since January, has been tiring. And There's so, no you know, that's one of that. the reasons Scott. that I've uh, that I've taken no a break from doing my podcast. Either. Is like, at the end Say of the day, again, I'm Locke. just so fucking tired. Say that again, Locke. What'd you ask him? Sorry, buddy. There's there's no difference. Scott, there's no difference between crypto and the stock market outside of maybe some regulation. They're, they're, they they totally. still find loopholes. Uh, these mm-hmm. guys they spend all their time and energy trying to find ways of fucking people that are at the door going, how do I make a quick buck? How do I make a quick? Buck? Yeah, I'll because they're money. in the I'll business make to make money. And then, you know, they're, they're in that business. And so they will do anything to make yeah, that money because over. that's their business. Mm-hmm. And, and so you're right. I mean, we saw that kind of with uh, GameStop when GameStop went crazy and Robin hood halted trading Well, there, you know, there's a, again, an exchange using their power against regular people. And so it doesn't just, you know, I see all these people coming up. Oh, crypto sucks. Crypto is a Ponzi. No, no, no. This happens in every market, any market where someone can get control, every market, they're going to try and take control, whether it's crypto commodities, stocks, bonds, it doesn't matter. And I mean, this is the first major crypto crash that we've, that I've seen since I've been involved in crypto. But there have been huge market crashes and and banks getting in trouble and funds getting in trouble and crashing in the market. It's been happening since the 1980s, uh, you know. And so this can is I, just the latest one. Story? Yeah, yeah. I, I'll tell you quick. I, I grew up poor. I, I didn't have a lot of money, and um, I, I didn't know a lot about banking or finance or stuff. I still don't. I, I I still don't. So you shouldn't take any advice on 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 money for me at all. Right. Even what I said is is just based purely in, in in ignorance. But I learned a very, very powerful lesson when I was in my late in my late 20s. Um, we were um, we wanted to buy a house. So my wife and I went to the bank and they were like, mm, we just we, we can't do it. We can't do it. And um, I was like, what? I, we've been with you for like we got we got okay jobs. Um, we're not, we pay our bills and they were like, the guy's like sitting there in his suit is like, no, sorry, can't do it. So I kind of stewed on it. I remember talking to somebody and they were like, go to another bank. And I went, what? He's like, yeah, go to another bank. They want your business. This is a business. And I was like, okay. So I went to another bank and they gave us a, a mortgage. We bought our first house. So I went back to the bank that I had been with since I was 12 years old. And I tried to get my money, like everything transferred, all my loans and everything. Cause I, I don't want to do business with a, a, a bank that I don't know, like that's not going to help me out. And one of the things they wouldn't let me move. And they told me that legally I wasn't allowed to move it was my student loan. <laughs> they said, no, you can't move your student loan. So a year later, I mentioned that to somebody because we were doing more banking. I mentioned it to the new bank that gave me the mortgage of the house. And they go, what? What did they tell you? And she's like, no, no, no. That's a lie. 
you can move your student loan. They don't own it. That's not illegal. I was like that. Mm -hmm. This is just, this is a very minor situation. And I, but it just, it was a huge lesson for me about these institutions. And these are big bank. I'm not talking about, I, I wasn't in a strip mall trying Talk, to get you're not talking about the loan. yak co-op no no <laughs> these are big banks with people yeah. blatantly lying to me trying to get just just, just trying to keep some ounce of business to, yeah. to it for me and it was stupid because it was only i don't know 20 30 grand worth of student loans but they, but they were like trying to hang on but like that shit's tangible. You're talking about tangible stuff. When we talk about Bitcoin, we're talking about shit you can't see. Or but I'm just saying, just kind of, you know what I mean? Me, and so, so to like me, the regular though, person the understands is, banking rules. But but regular, it's like the high priestess back in the in the Egyptian days. They were like, hey, you're going to go to hell if you don't do this, or you're going to burn forever if you don't do that. And they're like, how do you know? He's like, well, I got these books, and they tell me everything. And, and then you, you don't want to do this because this book says, you know, you're going to get eaten by a crocodile and spend the rest of your life in, in, in Hades. It's like, fuck, I guess so. If it's in that book, right? Cause we don't know, we don't have access to that book. It's the same uh, theory behind mechanics and doctors and stuff like that. It's like, they can tell you anything's wrong with you or dentistry. You know how many shitty dentists there are out there going, you need 10 grand worth of work. And you're like, I guess so. Cause you're the dentist and I don't know. Right. And I don't want to spend that time trying to figure it out. But what you're talking about is is legitimate fraud, and it happens all the time with banks. But it like what we're seeing here now with Bitcoin is you've got as as yeah. Scotty you pointed out some of the smartest losers on the planet that have figured out a way to game the system when it comes to digital currency. No one else knows how to do this mm -hmm. shit other than a select few group of people. And so it's hard to regulate something when you don't really know what it is. Like for the last 10 years, I've been going, I still don't understand Bitcoin, but man, does it sound incredible. But the confidence now that nobody has in crypto because of what we're seeing, I'm watching mm -hmm. all the cheerleaders, they're stopped cheerleading, right? Guys like Greg Foss, not doing a lot of cheerleading on Twitter the last couple of days, just stuff like stay the course. And I like Greg, he's a good dude, but he's a mm -hmm. cheerleader for Bitcoin because he's invested in it, as most people are. But the PR around around crypto, the messaging around crypto, is it's like an onion. When guys stop talking about it, when guys stop cheerleading for it, and when you start getting receipts of exchanges that are going to zero, Tom Brady and Giselle losing two billion the week they got divorced. You got Sam Bankman Freed running for the hills, begging for ten billion dollars because that money's gone. What was Luna? Twenty billion? Now he's starting Luna like how do you, as as a finance guy and a guy with a podcast about Bitcoin and hot wallet, how do you have any confidence at this point? Like, how do you have any confidence that, you know, this is actually something that you're going to be educating people about because you can't educate people when it comes to assholes who are just in it to mm -hmm. steal from you. And that's what we're talking about now. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, I was replying to someone yesterday on Twitter about this because, uh, you know, they wrote saying, you see, this is what all the crypto skeptics have said. And I've I've been someone who's never really been skeptical about technology. Like if the tech makes sense, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I, that's probably going to be valuable later down the road. You know, you think about uh, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Netflix, all of these things where it's like, oh, iPhone. Everyone has an iPhone. Maybe I should buy Apple stock. People might like that, you know, or, oh, Tesla, you know, like Tesla shares. I think they were like $12 when they when they first came out. Oh, electric vehicles. If I had known how to buy shares back then, I probably would have invested in that. And so, you know, I understand some of the tech aspects of it. And so uh, that's what really kind of keeps me going in it. But it is hard when you have these people, like I said, who let you down and these these actors who have a lot of power, have a lot of power over the market, uh, you know, and they, and they end up letting, uh, letting you down. And, and it's not any better now that we have one less exchange because now Binance has pretty much 80% of the market. And so I think what's going to happen is we're going to end up seeing regulators step in and say, okay, JP Morgan Chase, we trust you and we know how to bail you out. Oh, you know, Bank of America, we trust you and we've bailed you out before. So we'll help you with crypto and we'll regulate your crypto. So wow. that's, uh, you know, out of this, I think that's what's coming, which is very sad because, you know, we had these people who we trusted to 
really steward the technology forward, bring it to everyone. Look, this is about financial equity for everyone. We're building a new financial system. Yeah, but did any did and, any part of you at all during this like whole thing was any part of you going, yeah, maybe Dean and the guys, maybe they're right. <laughs> You know, uh, maybe, no. <laughs> like maybe, maybe, maybe these guys are uh, victims of their own selfishness. Maybe these guys are on the take and you're seeing well, these guys get caught being on the take. And that my question to you would be stockmarketmentor.com, hotwallet.com. As, a, as an advisor, are you taking a step back from cheerleading for crypto at this point? Well, I, it's hard to paint crypto with like a brush because well, there's, 65, there's 65 yeah, no, it's thousand not hard different at all. ones. Just did it right there again. You know, well, really I know, but there's, actually. there's different ones that have different use cases. And so I use some of the ones that have different use cases. So, you know, I still believe that Bitcoin is fine. You know, yes, the price action sucks right now. But if you have that long term, 10 year time you're horizon. Doing it again, Scott, you're doing it. You get, no, I'm telling you, I want to know from you. That tweet you sent yesterday going, can't fucking believe I got had. <laughs> well, are you, you know, going like to said, continue to be or are you going to go Let me get back into maybe the Warren Buffett stuff? I don't know. The Warren Buffett stuff hasn't been very rewarding either. So uh, <laughs> crypto, the technology is more exciting than stocks. Well, I'll be is. honest. So yeah. that to me and just the drama, I think is more exciting. So, yeah, I, I you know, I, I never felt myself was. Uh, so much of a cheerleader telling everyone they have to buy. I'm just saying, hey, this technology is interesting to me. Maybe it's something you might want to look into yeah. or not. And if not, then I'll, like I said, I'll vouch for hey. Scott on that. Okay, cool. Scott, Scott never, like I, no. I, I've had guys pushing crypto. Like I've, I've met three or four people in the last couple of years that were like, you got to get into this. If you're not into this, you're an idiot. Like there was that. Scott was never that. For active like, investors, Dean, like this volatility is amazing. Uh, this, like, you know, if you bought the dip yesterday on Bitcoin, you know, dip. if you bought it at the close yesterday, it went up two thousand dollars today. Yeah. Oh, dude, and there's opportunity. That's active trading volatility. Table. Totally. You know, right? That's what I, I do. I I sent you a little screenshot of like, hey man, just closed out a trade. That mm -hmm. you know, that was a five hour trade. That's not this one. Is it? This is this one. This is you. This is the the trade you just closed. Hey man, out? just closed right? out a trade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I made thirty five hundred dollars in five hours. On so, yeah, see, and that's the thing is that like a lot of people look at the stock market, they'll look at Bitcoin and look at the drop and go, oh, it's over. Fucking get out. You're scared. Get paranoid. But you still see opportunity in that, right? That that which just makes yeah. you good at what you do. You're like, all right, fuckers. <laughs> All right. Yeah. This thing is well, bottomed out. You're it is a little a like today. Vegas, though. Yeah. It is a little is. like Vegas. Everybody yeah, I it's, know it's, that it's a regular gambler, they tell me how much money they make in Vegas, and they're all lying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My grandmother. Well, that wasn't a lie. Shirt. That was like uh, that Every was me feeling year. good about myself, knowing that I'm coming on this show to have a, a you know a new asshole ripped based on crypto. Yes. But if yes. you you know if you can learn technical analysis, which is what I teach at StockMarketMentor.com. And what my trading course is all about, reading charts. I'm long, you know, I'm buying here because I don't think it's going below here. But if it does, I'm going to sell. But then if it comes up here, you know, I'm going to sell and make money. And so that's what I teach. And that's what I do. You know, I have long-term crypto holdings. Like I said, yep. those are those are taking a big fucking hit. I'm down bigly <laughs> on those. And that sucks. That's sucks. sorry. I'm but, laughing. I just I haven't oh, heard you fine. be this honest in a long time. And it's refreshing where you're like, and guys, I got to tell you, I fucking took it right in the hoop. <laughs> it's coming. I'm not, you know, I'll, if anyone wants to have a conversation about it, I'm, I'm more yeah. than open to have it. But, you know, but then I also have an, an aspect of my account that's a trading account and I can make money on the upside or the downside. And so if you have that long term time horizon, like I do with the holdings, Fuck, that can go to zero. That's fine. I'm trading this as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's uh that's how I look at crypto. And and I look at it as a better opportunity in the stock market because like I said, Bitcoin was up 20% today, or or I think it was uh two thousand dollars in one day. You know, that's a month maker for Dude, some he people. just peeled off thirty five hundred dollars in five hours yesterday on Bitcoin. And everybody's like, it's yeah. down, but he knows what he's doing, which is my point. Stock Make market fun of me all you want. I'm not making fun of you. <laughs> you know, I, dude, so. have I, I have been very measured with my approach. I oh, have no, no, to no. believe You're it's fine. MLM, 
But my point is this, and I and I also agree with Locke, bricks and mortar, baby. Give me some stuff that I can actually look at, I can see, I can feel, I can touch, right? Same thing's why I don't believe in religion, because it's not real. You can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it. It's just bullshit. Yeah. So, like, Locke's 100% right. Like, now's the time, If in, in my mind, now's the time to get back to basics. But at the same time, um, if you need any more information and you're one of those people that likes to gamble a little bit, that likes to kind of, you know, uh, throw caution to the wind, no, spot no, your I, guy. I, I don't think I don't think you should be sending more sheep that direction at all. No, I'm sending. <laughs> I think what you should be doing so he can teach it, him how to make just, money off of all the sadness. That's what I'm doing. It's a slaughter. <laughs> it, it's yeah. a complete slaughter. And if you have a full time job and you have a family and and you have like pastimes that take up your time, do not get into this. You need to mm -hmm. be like Scott. He has no life. He hides in his basement <laughs> seven days a week, twenty hours a day. That's how he he's making a living. You have to be that committed to it, or yeah. you're just going to get sucked up into the machine and chewed up and spit out the other end. It's going to yeah. kill you. So don't get into it or Do make not, you go broke. We sh you shouldn't. You should not be sending people to the slaughter. That's that's the problem mm -hmm. with this. It you can't. You keep calling it a game. You keep and it's a game. It's a total game. There's winners. There's losers. And there's a lot more losers than winners. That's yeah. why everyone calls it a Ponzi scheme because there's somebody at the top going, keep coming, keep yeah. coming, my people, keep um, coming. Can, here's a question. I Maybe they need could, your money. I need your money. Maybe here's a question for you, Scotty. Um, is there any thought has FTX and any of these, uh, these shit coins that have all gone tits up and lost billions and billions, any thought to rolling in some Amway or maybe some Arbon? Or <laughs> like like with crypto you get a free thing of skin mm -hmm. cream and you if you get someone else yeah. to buy crypto you also get skin cream and then the more people to buy crypto and skin cream the more money you make anything like that on the horizon or yeah no? yeah i'm probably doing pamper chef later uh i'm gonna, gonna do a pamper <laughs> chef party my, uh, anyone my wife to come over and get some uh, lemon pepper seasoning <laughs> now that well, you know month, again but Locke is completely right if you are yeah. not committed to doing it it is not a game you know it took me a decade to be able to do what i did last night and it takes you know it took that much time to be able to make as much money as i made today trading the normal stock market you know i got some trades on right now i'm not even watching them uh you know i'm making a little money today but uh, again if you're not committed That's to doing it. That's the cool it, guy uh, way to don't. trade, eh, Locke? Where you're like, I got my back to the screen just making money big time. You can see it. Look at the lines. Look at it. It's like, <laughs> no, no. It's like Tinder for stock look market mentors. Look at it, look Scott is sitting here actively shitting his pants, and he can't wait to get off this podcast <laughs> so that he can I'm go. I'm shitting my pants because I don't have enough Bitcoin right now. It just broke. Uh, it just went up uh, another uh, 3%, and, and I'm underexposed. So, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm shit my. Well, there you right go. Now. Go buy more, dude. <laughs> hop in, both feet. I'm gonna stay out and just uh, it's watch. Too, it's too high now. It's too high um, now. I have you, rules to my investing. Okay, but well, uh, you know, I uh, Dean, I do. Yeah, I do appreciate your skepticism because, and as a friend, it's always good, in my opinion, to have someone debate you on your thesis. I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm right. I don't know. Like maybe Bitcoin is gonna turn to zero. That could totally happen. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate friends like you and friends like Locke and ryan even ryan although that face um because you guys help me question huh? are yeah. you sure about this buddy yeah and yeah. for now yeah you know i think the tech is still good and until they come up with something better then mm. uh you know then maybe i'll think otherwise but right you know, now you know what i heard all too I, all i'm doing right now is imagining the conversation that scott has on an like on a nightly basis in the last couple of months with his wife, honey, how to go? It's all money. I'm picturing right now, and I can just see the discomfort on her face. Yeah, and I can just see That's... her questioning, yeah, how you yeah. do make money for the family, right? I I can see it, I can hear it, I can feel it, and I can see yeah. it oozing out of you. Well, he's not your, saying anything. You're just It's mostly just me right uh, curled up in the fetal position at her feet when she enters the house. When you watch, okay, let me take, I'll let you go when you, when you do this, but when you, you, you watch the market crumble yesterday and you know, it's been a bad few months and you watch Bitcoin, take it right in the shitter. Um, take me through your thought process. Like, did you get sweaty at all? Like, do you, do you, does your, do you have a, a visceral reaction? I'm sweaty for him. 
Yeah, I am too. I get sweat pouring. No, down my back. no, you know, because I look at it again on a technical level. And so, like I tweeted out a chart yesterday, uh, and I said, look, Bitcoin is as oversold as it has been since on this time frame, since the pandemic crash when it hit three thousand dollars. It it hit that level of oversoldness yesterday. Mm -hmm. And based on that, I said, hmm, I'm gonna buy Bitcoin. And I did, and I made some money on it. And so I don't see this as, again, volatility for active traders. You want volatility. You don't yeah. want slow and grindy sideways. That's boring. I fall asleep yeah, here some days yeah. when then things true. aren't happening. When things are doing this, I can make money one way or the other. And yeah. so, um, you know, for, for someone who's just looking at the market, oh, wow, it's down so much. I'm thinking, great, but when's the bounce? Because most markets, stocks, crypto, bonds, whatever, there's a big move one way and then there's a counter move the other way. And so if we see something that's down a lot, we have uh, what's called a rebound setup or, or a 59 minute trade where you, you know, a stock gaps down like Facebook or Meta, for example. Bad. Oh, Mark Zuckerberg, he's uh, he's firing all this people. 11,000 people he fired yesterday. And guess 11, what? The 000. stock went up, Dean. The stock went up. Well, I don't really so if you can understand. if you can use those headlines yeah. as trading signals, then you know then you can make money consistently, and that's mm. what I try and do. All right. Well, do, you, do you got to go? Yeah. I know you said you had to go. Uh, I do. Yeah. So, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I got to. Right. I got to no, do no, uh, my sorry. video for. I just didn't know if you wanted to hang around for the rest of the conversation. We're going to talk about uh, vagina flavored uh, potato chips out of Lithuania, I believe. I, yeah, and, probably uh, dart uh, out for that nice. one, Doctor Locke. <laughs> and some and and we're, we've got Doctor Locke. Uh, if, if you've got herpes, we've got that coming up. A good way to control your herpes. Do you want to stick around for that, or are you busy? You want to go? No, no. Uh, well, you know, maybe if it was Spenny just uh, doing Locke's racial dogs. humor, then uh, maybe I would. But uh, I don't know. But uh, vagina <laughs> chips are a little below my bar, sir. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got it. Do you want to see them before you go? Okay. These vagina chips. You sure you want to see them? Yeah. I'm here. I'm like, let's go. All right. Are they I'll shaped like the a vagina? They, they taste like vaginas, apparently. I, I, I mean, okay, I haven't tried see. one. Yeah. Those are the ones. They're made by this company Lose. in Lithuania called Chaz. They make... <clears throat> I don't even like saying the word unless I'm calling someone a weak individual. Um, pussy. That's what, that's what they say. Um, these are 18-plus chips uh, out of Lithuania. And they uh, uh, taste apparently like uh, the female uh, area. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, Dean. You're welcome. Really Anyt fun. Anytime, buddy. <laughs> I love you guys, love and you I too. love Ryan. By the way, I you know I'm uh, I he and know. I mess around on here, but uh, I do believe Ryan is a great guy, and uh, he's one of the best. I appreciate uh, appreciate uh, his work on on the DBS network. I appreciate you. All right, you guys. Sure, don't want any of these chips. Uh, no, I'm okay. I'll stick with dill pickle. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Although, if who that knows? Tasted like dill Maybe pickle, I'd never chips. leave that area. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Uh, See you. I, if there's a good one. If that tasted like dill pickle, I'd never leave. Oh, that was good. Have you seen these chips? They're called Chaz. Lose your virginity with Chaz. These uh, do you, chips. You do you do you like? like um, See, I'm not a organs. big dill pickle fan. Now, I'm not a no. Oh, I'm a huge dill pickle fan. Huge dill pickle, salt and vinegar. Every other flavor can eat shit. Um, I would never try these chips. Huh? Like I'm not horny enough to do it. But this is out of Lithuania. The taste guru. <laughs> uh, the the taste guru Vilmanta says the chips are unreal taste, special aroma that. That will not leave anyone indifferent when the receptors of the tongue start to tango and the entire palate of sensations will flood from the tip of the tongue to the palate. You'll finally feel the feeling of fullness that you've always wanted. Um, I, I don't know how, who buys these. How did they? He's a Lithuanian company. I, you'd be, you'd be I, surprised. I don't know. People will buy this. People yeah, will buy they said this. the main but difference one between of the, the kettle and the, re the regular, these are kettle-flavored, vagina-flavored chips. Um. And they they so, said that it's a Lithuanian company. They just started selling them on on mass. Just started selling all of them, and they can't keep up with the orders. They have a bunch yeah, of normal flavors that doesn't but decided surprise to me. do the vaginal flavored chips after they had yeah. 
they hired f- five guys to taste chips for a month. And they're, they settled on this one flavor, all five guys. And therefore, you've got these chips. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know where to go with this. So you remember those jelly beans they had? Yeah. And they had yeah, the yeah. ones that tasted awful, like one yeah, from like Harry poo, Potter, another one jelly like bellies, yeah, food and, boogers, and then another one vomit or yeah. whatever. Apparently, those sold like crazy. People mm-hmm. wanted to, you know, try it. I guess so. It doesn't surprise me that they can't keep these things on the shelf. I, I am always shocked at people's ability to create these products. Right, like we have locker room candles coming out. Do they for, smell like balls? Christmas. No, no, they're. Uh, mine smells like beer when yeah. you light it. it smells uh-huh. like beer, and Grant's is going to smell like chicken because he's into fried chicken, and it does smell like chicken. Mine smells like beer. It's amazing. And then we sent the creator from Prairie Rose Candle Factory here in Edmonton. She lives in Sherwood Park. We said you need to create one that smells like Jimmy's apartment, the Dennis Sadness, and we're calling it the Candle of Sadness, and. <laughs> So we sent her there into his apartment so she could get the smell. She hung out for a bit, left two weeks later, delivers this candle. And I swear to God, because it's, it's, you would think it would be difficult to actually duplicate the smell of his apartment. She fucking nailed it. I don't know. Smell like, well, there, it smells like, a mix of soup, rotting vegetation. You know that smell that you go when you go to the bottle depot? Bad BO and ass. And it's, she, she it. made it work. And when we took it out of the bag and smelt it, it ruined my whole day. And Grant's like, did we make a mistake? Is anybody going to buy these? And I'm like, don't worry about it. People are going to buy these candles. <laughs> we'll we'll have them for sale here at the end of November. But I want um, one now too. I want, I want all went, three of those. She candles. went home to her lab. <clears throat> took and a I don't shit know on how, a plate. I don't know how she did it. We we're like, what did you do? She goes, I just, I got, I think I got the Dennis sadness, and we. And I'm like, you nailed. Oh my God, you nailed it. <laughs> Brilliant. So there's people out there that just have a knack for this. And clearly, for Chaz, <clears throat> Chaz has a knack at for this. vagina yeah. flavors. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, and, and, and the guys who took part in it each got paid 10 grand in Lithuania. That's like a million dollars. Um, and now this guy can't not only keep them in Lithuania, he's back ordered. All across the world, because everybody's like, because I got to be honest with you, I'm kind of the same way. I'm like, I would never want to like I would never buy these unless it was like out of sheer interest or I wanted to fuck around with my friends at a party. Right. Like I wouldn't go into the store and go, man, I just love this flavor because we all I mean, you know, I don't want to get into it, but uh, the jokes exist for a reason. You know, so I'm not going to sit here and go, what does that smell like? Nor am I going to demean anybody or make any sort of misogynistic explanation about what that might smell like. What I would tell you is this, is that whoever nailed that. I don't know the metrics, but I would like an explanation as to how they came up with it. Because like we're having women in our comment section say things like this. Does the taste change once a month? I don't know, Linda. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then Maggie jumps in. Sour cream and onion. It might have a touch of that. <laughs> you can see where uh, that where she's yeah. going there. And then Ellen, Ellen jumps in. She's like yogurt zest. I'm like, I don't think it's yogurt zest. Anyway, fascinating, isn't it? I'm just trying to think of a reason why I need to buy them. Like you don't need, because they're the whole reason is they, they apparently taste like the female area. That's the whole reason. 
I'm curious. I I am too. I, I would, I would like, like I, I said, I wouldn't buy them push. I would just to like have a snack. I would buy them for the purposes of going, all right, let's see. Let's yeah. let's see if that's true. Yeah, I'm not gonna eat the whole bag. Right? No one does. There's gonna be a there's gonna be some waste. <laughs> And if ladies, if you can find a guy that eats that whole bag, he might be a keeper. That might be the guy. <laughs> might be the guy you're looking for. Be a good way to suss out whether or not you want that guy around. Just have that bag handy. Time, time to change your uh, your date. Tinder profile, guys. I ate a <laughs> whole bag of Chaz's uh, vagina flavored chips and loved them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a you're, great idea. You keep your lady, you keep one handy. You want and if you're into that, you're like, I'm gonna test this guy. You put him in a clear bowl, you say, Hey, do you like these chips? Yes or no. He tries one. You're like, All right, I like them. Can't figure it out, but I really love these chips. You're like, fuck, stop eating the chips. Let's head to the bedroom. Yeah. Figure this out. Yeah. What's that flavor? Come here, honey. I'll show you. Yeah. Fascinating, isn't it? And then on the other side wow. of the equation, on the other side of the uh, the pond in England, as we stay with the genitals, um, <clears throat> this story shook me this week. 22-year-old British man named Joe claims he was denied a job opportunity because his penis was too big. Quote, they thought I had an erection throughout this whole interview, <laughs> and they were very much like, your attire isn't right. It's an amazing story. You know how it came out? No. It was on a TV show. Oh, yeah. Like that story, how the story came out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And wasn't the show called Guys with Guys with Big Cocks? Wasn't that the actual name of the show? That's the that's the actual name of the show in the United Kingdom. So he he actually has he has a large package. Yeah. yeah. And um and one of the storylines within the show itself was was denied a job because of the size of my here's the thing i don't have a lot of sympathy for the guy no and the reason being if you if you're packing there are ways to reduce the visibility of it right mm -hmm. you you don't wear tight fitting pants there's there's ways of strapping it to the side of the leg Right. There's some tuck the inside of the hip. Do. There's a tuck and there's an upward yeah. tuck you can do too. Upward to the top of the hip. Top clearly to the top of the hip. He was not doing these things <clears throat> in order to no. negate the 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 possibility that someone was gonna see that and wonder why it was so visible. Right. Yeah. And so I, I you know what? He can cry wolf. He can be, you know, I, I don't have any sympathy for the man. You just put it away. Right. I don't either. I don't either, dude. And the story's fascinating because he was talking about how he uh, was at a job interview. It was a British. Yeah. The documentary is called My Massive Cock. <laughs> what a great documentary title. Eh? What should we call this? Um, how about My Massive Cock? Great. It says everything you need to know. Uh, where he revealed his life is in shambles because of his huge penis. I've never shambles. heard that before in my life. I've never heard that before in my life. Yeah. It's about nine and a half inches now, he said. Scaling is off, quite off. It's thicker than my forearm. It's about seven inches around. Impressive. Jeez. Joe said he admits that he's had to wear special underwear with an added pouch to prevent his penis from falling out and to fit everything in due to the lack of social acceptance, loss of a job opportunity. The 22-year-old said he's considering getting a reduction surgery on his large genitalia. Quote, the response I got was, you're not going to get the job. We thought you were a good candidate, but we thought there was inappropriate behavior happening. Joe revealed, quote, they thought I had an erection through the whole interview, and they were very much like, your attire's not right. They clearly meant we can see your dick. Right. Now, the documentary follows a couple named Bonnie and Tommy looking to spice up their sex life with a threesome. Andy, an adult performer, came in. He was 10 and a half inches from tip to base. Andy said about his manhood. Jesus. Size really matters is my line of work. He became an adult performer. Managed to use his large member to earn over 25,000 followers on his uh, social, on the gram, if you will. Yeah. So he's he's thinking the right way with his massive penis. He's like, pivot city, right? I've got this huge thing. Not going to be upset by it. I'm going to head right into porn with 10 and a half inches. Why not? Perfect. Yeah. Good for you. That's where you're supposed to be. 
the other guy, and I call bullshit on him too. And I call bullshit on a lot of these stories and documentaries. They're more like kind of free tender for people. You know what I mean? For guys. Yeah. Because you know what's going to happen here? His yeah. name, Joe's name's out there. This other guy's name's out there. They're going to, yeah. these a bunch of people are going to go looking for them online. They're going to follow them. They're going to slide into the DMs and they're going to go like, what do you say? Joe and that other gentleman, they're just stunting. They're pretending. I totally don't even believe that story about him losing a job because his dick was too big. How many people at a job interview go, you know what? As your potential employer, I have to say, I have a problem with the size of your penis in your pants right now. Not one. You're not even allowed to ask anybody how old they are. But they didn't say that. Penis. They said when he asked for a reason why he didn't get the job, they said inappropriate attire, which I agree with. This is why I don't feel bad for the guy. He didn't have the proper pair of pants on to mask the massive dick that he has. So it's his fault. Yeah. Right? He's wearing the wrong Where, pants. where, like where, I, where like you, you wear like a thin pair of jogging pants out and you can see helmet. That's inappropriate. He probably right? didn't have, maybe he doesn't have enough money to buy a, a, a pair of pants that fit properly. But here's the thing where I do feel possibly sorry for him is how do you combat that? Because having a huge lets, hammer. No, no. How do you combat that that argument about losing your jaw? So, Dean, you're interviewing me. You're offended by the appearance of my dick in my pants. You can't say to me, I'm not hiring you, Locke, because it looked like you had an erection the whole time we were doing the job interview. Yeah. You can't say that because we live in times where you can't say anything. You just So you say, didn't like your attire. So yeah. The guy goes home and he goes, I know what it was. They could see my cock. Huge he thought man. I had. No, you can't phone. I can't phone you back up and go, right. Dean. I just have a huge cock. It's not my fault. Do you know what I'm saying? So he's sort of caught. That's the, the only middle. reason. I, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He just has to walk away and go. Ah, this big dick of mine. Can't just, get anything done with it. I'm just going to have to move on to the next time. opportunity. And yeah. I got to be honest. Listen, let's, Here let's we go. just, no, no, no. I, we go. I've been very honest. Be honest. I know. Go ahead. I got, I'm waiting for it now. I've been waiting for it this whole time for you to go. I got to be honest. I know it's pain. I know what no. it's like to be self-conscious no. about this massive no. hog. I'm quite normal in that department outside of my large testicles. But I've learned over the years that I need a certain type of underwear, right? Yeah. That's why I've got the Costco split toe, because if I don't, I'm flying around. Things are flying around and I don't want to see them. And I and I sit on them and it, like there's just it, so I've dealt with Costco it over the years. split toe. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Where was I going with this? I don't know. No, no, you lost me at Costco split toe. No, but my point is this is that like for everybody. Listen, if you're a guy. And there are a lot oh, of guys like the incel. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Finish up. Okay, go so go ahead. If let's just say, yeah, put yourself in Joe's shoes. I know his pain. Right. <laughs> you have a large unit, massive piece, and people are looking at you from the Staring perspective of the only real path for you is porn. Right. Like you have to get into. I got to be honest sign? with you. You need a very serious. You need to be wired a certain way, and I'll and I'll I'll be I'll step up to the plate. I couldn't do it. You wouldn't be able Did to you do, do porn. Not in a million years. I, if I if I didn't look how I looked naked, I would probably give it a go. If I had no scruples or options whatsoever, like you if I if I could. was that guy, twenty two, right? Joe's twenty two, looking no, you're for a just job. Dean. You're just Dean. Oh, if I'm like forty nine year old me. No, and it, someone it, comes along. It's like we want to put you in some mature porn. Could you ever? Could you ever have done a porn in your life? I don't think so. No, in, no see, I don't think so. No, I think most men, if they're being honest with themselves, like that's a wiring. Like, yeah. it would be extremely difficult. Well, have to, you ever seen a porn like a behind the scenes porn shoot? It's not like it's not what no, you see. It's, it's not, not the finished product. It's not. If sexy. you've ever, and I have seen because I have friends that were like key grips on 
porns back in the day. Yeah. And they're like, get a load of this like raw video of how porn is shot. And it's yeah. fucking amazing. It's like, okay, stop. Okay, you stay there. Don't move. I'm going to swing the camera There's angle no around and I'm going to put it right that. on the area of the P and the V. Okay, action. And the guy's like full thrust and he just stops, sits there. He might have a drink. He's like, hey, you okay? She's like, yeah, I'm fine. How you doing? How are your kids? Great. And then it's back into this like action. Is like, No, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. The same reason why I can't like, I, I would never join like, you know, a, a, a fucking community summer stock play. Like, it's like, I'm not doing that. I'm not pretending. I can't act like that. Like, it's like, just, it's just it isn't in me. But if someone's like, hey, you know, do you want, you, you might want to get into the business because you've got a hammer on you. I'd be like, thank you very much. Just because you have the hammer. Maybe some couching. Doesn't give you the mindset or the wiring you, yeah, you or the disposition to get into porn. Joe might need that insurance job. Right? That's right. He, well, then he's he gonna might have to be, figure out a he way to get. He's going to have to get some Levi's or something. He's going to have to get some yes thing that's not so bright because you can manage that. A lot of people don't know this. Like the the underwear that we sell at DeanBlundell.com. Just throwing it out there. Perfect example. Here it is. This is the this is what this guy needs. EdsFineImports.com. Luxury branded boxer briefs. Pouch in the front. Premium soft stretch material. The pouch in the front enables you to give that stuff a home. And it's made for Canadian guys, and you have an opportunity to get this if you've got a huge hammer. These are the kinds of underwear that you need. Now, here's the thing about these pouched underwear, too, especially the Gitch. It's kind of like a push-up bra. So it would make your package look smaller, and it would look more taut, right? So I that's think a strategic purchase for guys with bigger penises, larger so his, testicles. Joe's issue is, though, the... The, yeah, it's a little. So it's he's engorged. not. He's he he's not going to have to. He's he's going to have to move it around a bit. Yeah. Right. Like you know, I was doing the some pouch research. is fine. Yeah. You have to. You're going to have to put it over. Yeah. And, and uh, like across your leg. Yeah, sort of like with the tip to the hip, right? Tip towards the hip. That's the only comfortable way you can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like how we're doing this for people. We're giving people advice that have. That are you could call it blessed in that area, or you could just say we're giving you advice on how to not catch yourself in a jackpot like this, right? We got a we penis. I went to school with a guy. Uh, I won't say his name. I haven't seen him in years. Um, but he had a wicked hammer on him. Is his name Dean? No, it wasn't Dean. Um, his name was uh was Mike. <laughs> so not and Dean. Mike had a because and now that, that was when i learned when i was a teenager I, I moved to 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 yak i went to school in creston and he was in the same grade as me and i was like oh okay there's there's the shower and there's the grower and mike was a shower mike at the age of like 13 14 15 had a dong on him and did not contain that that thing well there was more than a couple occasions where he would wear sweats and a loose fitting set of underpants and it would be flopping around and we'd be like come on mike put that fucking thing away you're gonna hurt someone and i'm, I'm sure over the years he figured out that he had to contain it right <laughs> strap it to a leg do something with his underwear yeah don't wear yeah. the pants are gonna shoot like he definitely had some issues in that department when we were younger and I hope he sorted it out. Right. But that's but I, not, that's not I, an everyday problem for most men. I'd say no, very no, few like men the, are, there isn't, are there isn't like a man that. that I know that would go, you know what? This is just too big. It's John too big. Ham. John Ham's John got a Ham, hammer too. Yeah. Apparently when they were filming mad men, um, because the dress back in the 60s, Tighter. when they were, it was a 60s show, I guess. I, yeah. I never watched Mad Men. A lot of people go, oh my God, I can't believe you didn't watch Mad Men. Uh, but I didn't watch it. I never got into it. And then by the time it was, it was way too late. So apparently there was a, there was a scene where John, they dressed him up. They sent him out there and the director of the, of the episode cut pulled everybody off set, pulled John into a back room and said, we need to figure out your penis, what to do with your, 
we can't keep going here. What do we do? Because the ears? whole, the, everybody, can no one's going to pay any attention. Can you imagine how good you'd feel team. though if someone came up to you and said, "Listen, I got to, I got to talk to you, but we got to do this something about your story. massive penis." <laughs> we got to do some. Here's a picture of John Ham. This is the one you're talking about, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, when congrats, bro, good for you. Apparently, there was one scene where they 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 actually sent him back to dress to wardrobe to put to find different pants so that they so that they could actually the the everybody would pay attention to what was happening in the scene and Stop not his looking. large cock <laughs> it's a true story i wish it's like you know guys like john ham have it all right guys smart yeah. funny good looking rich yeah. actor and then you go what else does john ham have that i don't and you're like oh yeah that that yeah. he's got it all She's got it all, right? Mm -hmm. We'll never fair. know that pain. Well, not that kind of pain. We'll never know that. And it's a shame, <laughs> really. It really, really is. But yeah. if you're out there and it's too big, don't go talking to the news people about it because that's just free advertising. I know what you're doing. It's like free grinder, free Tinder. That's all you're doing. I know what you're doing. I can guarantee you, you Joe so you're, lose a you job. don't feel you don't feel sorry for Joe. <laughs> Fuck no, I don't feel sorry for Joe. Dude, he was on a documentary called My Massive Cock, and millions of people saw it. And he's a single 22 year old guy. Are you telling me that wasn't like a strategic appearance on a con? Of a, like, have you ever we heard a of a guy show? going? You know what? It's too big. Have you ever heard a guy say that? For or, me. or uh, you know, the spouse of a guy. Oh, it's just too big. What? I'm trying to find a picture of Joe. I, I haven't seen a picture of him. We saw the story yesterday when you tweeted it out. Oh, yeah. This is him. I got a picture of it. Let's see. Is he a good looking dude? Like, does he need does he need help? At all, like I mean, if he's a good-looking dude, he might be successful in the in the. Well, we'll uh, I got a couple of pictures here. We'll see what you think. I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, my, my assumption is, oh, here's Joe. See now, this guy. Yeah, I don't know if Let's this is real. Although I can tell you, he is circumcised, even through the underpants, which means he's he's packing some heat. Hang on, I'm getting there. I can't believe that this is what it's come to. You don't need to be doing a live package. podcast for thousands of people that download this thing, tens of thousands of people a month that download this thing. And all we're doing is talking about guys and their dicks. That's great. This is Joe. That's Joe. Good looking fella. And that's what he's dealing with down there. See, that's, yeah, that's a little bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> he's also quite thin, which is, uh, <laughs> and there he is again with it. Sitting on his bed, taking a picture, super skinny, and he's just got this thing. It's like weird thing, I guess. That's Joe from My Massive Cock, the documentary. Congratulations, Joe. I, Joe's Everyone not a very you. attractive man, and he looks a little creepy. I think he's probably um, firing silicone into that thing. He he looks he looks like he'll probably Fluffing. spend some time alone, like. Yeah, I've I've always I truly believe there's someone out there for everyone, but I also I, think some people take longer to find that. <laughs> and Joe, I think Joe's going to struggle. Uh, I don't disagree. Anyway, Godspeed, Joe, and that massive penis of yours. Thanks to Lachlan Cross for being here today at Lachlan Cross on Twitter. Uh, is where you can find him. Nine five seven Cruise FM in Edmonton. Nine five seven Cruise FM .ca. Listen to his morning show every single weekday morning. It's a good one. Um, and thank appreciate you, sure. being here, brother. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let us know We're when those scented tomorrow. candles. Yeah, yeah, not here tomorrow. It's Remembrance Day. I uh, hope that everybody takes some time tomorrow to remember the people and the men and the women that gave us the freedom that we have that about 8,000 fucking hillbillies seem to think doesn't matter. Uh, and by the way, quickly before we go, big news coming out of Ontario Monday, mask mandates return. Can you imagine that in your own province of Alberta? Can you imagine sliding well, that one? Are they doing they're they're not it's not mandated. What they're yeah. asking people to do is if you're in a public place, um, they're asking you you're not gonna be turned away if you don't wear a mask. They're asking in Ontario? In Ontario. They're not they're not demanding it. I thought I thought there was some level of forgiveness on it. I I, I probably 
Um, but apparently the very serious reminder to put on your mask and in certain places it will be mandated. I don't know to what extent, Okay. but mask mandates are coming back and people are losing their fucking minds. And let me just quickly say this. Cause I don't want to fucking, uh, I, I, I don't want to really the point. sick though. Yeah. They're all sick. Like half the schools in Alberta are closed. If I'm not mistaken, specifically mm-hmm. some of the J, uh, K through sixes, half the schools are closed. We've got um icus packed with kids with rsv and COVID and the flu it's flu season it's like double whammy we haven't been protecting ourselves we've been doing anything yeah. and let me just say this and same with ontario we're packed icus packed chios packed sick kids packed no room there's no room they're packed they've got no room they said no vacancy no room in the so if your kid gets hurt today go fuck yourself uh, because uh, we live in two provinces, specifically Alberta and Ontario, run by kleptocrats and conservatives who don't believe that this shit is real. And we got a bunch of kids that are very sick and irreversibly yeah. sick in some cases. So masks are coming out. And I, I want to say this before I let everybody go. You are a fucking loser. If you have a problem putting on two millimeters of cloth for children that don't have hospitals to go to because everybody's sick, you're a fucking moron. Okay, and I don't like masks. Nobody likes masks. Nobody wants to go backwards. Everybody wants to go forwards. I get that. This is going forward for the people around you. This is not yeah. about you. This is about everybody else. Got into a tweet with a guy today who was like, fuck you. My immunity is the best. I haven't been sick once. I'm like, you're a fucking moron. This is not about you. And everybody's different. And everybody's immunity is different. And you're yeah. not talking about everybody else. Like another 34.9999 million Canadians. You're talking about yourself. So put on a fucking mask if you're asked to. And if you're going to put up a fight about it, go fuck yourself. If you're one of those people that's going to go into a restaurant and they're like, you got to wear a mask and you plan on showing up and showing off, you're a fucking piece of shit. It's all you are. You're just a useless piece of shit. We've seen it enough. We know what's going on. It's a level of protection. Put your mask on if you're asked to for other people, you dumb fucks. Anyway. Well, and I, I think the other thing that, that needs to be said out loud is like take the take the um the mask conversation away. There are other things we can do to help prevent the spread of, of viruses. And unfortunately, we're dealing with the ramification of of a of a shutdown and a um of not being around people. And that vi- virus is just they mutate, they get stronger, and so now they're like, hey, everyone's back. Woohoo! Now we're just gonna beat the hell out of you. So we're dealing with that right now. So kids were away from school, and then and 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 they were, you know, their immunity systems changed a little bit, got, got down, and then boom, they they got hit, and and we're being pounded. But if you're the other thing that I heard is doctors are saying, hey, listen, the mask will work, the washing your hands will work, but also if you're sick, just stay home, stay home from work, right? Like. There's little things like that we can do, and 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 if if it's approached from that perspective, then then we don't have to have the mask conversation. But I think we should get to a point where, hey, listen, every couple of years we're gonna have a really really bad 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 virus that's gonna tear through our communities and it's gonna fill up the hospitals. It's gonna hit old folks' homes. It's gonna have an impact on our on on everything, everything we do. If somebody said to me, hey, this will help if you go to the grocery store tonight, put a mask on, mm-hmm. right? This just, just just in case you got it from somebody you work with, and then you're not spreading it to somebody that you don't even know in a place where there's more people, right? Mm-hmm. I, I I think we got to get past the, the, the mask mandate political conversation and, and just deal with it strictly from the listen, there's ways to combat viruses, and this is one of them. They do it in other countries around the world. Why can't we wrap our heads around the idea of doing it here? Does does this mean they're coming for your guns? Yeah, no, it think, means yeah. it means that the ICUs are full right now. Yeah. That's all. No. That, that, that's all, Cletus. Don't put on a mask. Don't put on yeah. a mask. Why not? Well, because that means they're coming for your guns next. Just, just put a break on your prepping. Yeah, throw a mask on your doomsday prepping. Yeah. yeah, just take a second. Do you want my doctor wrong real quick? Jerky, I do because I while do we're quickly. on the subject of masking and while we're on the subject of doing something for the community, Lachlan may or may not have cured herpes on his own. 
No, I just have some advice. Okay. okay. By the way, I have cold sores, herpes. which is a version of herpes. Herpes. Right. And I get them. Herpes. Got them when I did this this morning on the on the locker room. So I'll try to keep it tight just in case anybody was listening. We got this lots morning. of time. Don't worry about it. Lay okay. It All right. Herpes. So when I was a kid, I got them from the Duke of War doctor. I told you that removed my tonsils. Great. Uh, Dean thinks it's from Sarah. I was sucking face with Sarah in it the was. grapevine. You un you loved it, an unclean woman. That's the only way you got it. You didn't get it from a dude board doctor and some tonsil uh, some tonsil uh, surgery you had. You got it. I from could Sarah. roll out my school pictures from grade one to grade twelve. That's and I bet you eight of the twelve years I got a honker on yeah, my from face. Sarah, I, I listen. However, I caught it is beside the point. When I was about 2021, 20, uh -huh. I ran into a guy that saw a cold sore on my on my lip and said, hey, do you get cold sores? And I went, yes. He goes, you should try lecithin. Went to the pharmacy, grabbed a bucket of lecithin, took it up to the guy in the back and said, does this work for cold sores? Because I'll do anything. And he goes, no, never heard of it. So put it back. Literally within the next couple of months, saw someone else. They said, hey, do you get cold sores? And I went, yeah. They said, you should try lecithin. And I went, Jesus, I'm going to try it. So I went back, grabbed it, started taking it. I'm very diligent with things. I, when, when I get into a routine, I'll, I'll stick with it. And for years, I took it, and it worked. I would run out of it and then not buy it for like a week thinking, oh, maybe I'd, and then I'd get one. So basically, what I ended up doing is taking it for years. In the last couple of years, I started to get um, cold sores again. So I went back to my, I went to my doctor and he said, and I told him about the lecithin and he goes, I have heard there's no documented proof that lecithin is a cure for cold sores, but there Herpes. has been some undocumented success and people have claimed that it does work, but it also wears off. So it clearly wore off for me. So I've been looking for, like, I've been paying very particular attention to how I've been feeling and the things I've been eating and why I've been getting them. And I think I have, I legitimately think I have made a connection between not just, I'm always stressed out, but I honestly think when I eat poorly, I swear to God. And this past weekend, I had, we had a bad, we had a really busy weekend. You got herpes? And we had, I ate. I ate like shit a couple of times um, and I didn't feel good on mm -hmm. Monday and mm -hmm. on Tuesday on the <clears throat> podcast. I don't know Herpes. if anybody noticed I could feel the tingle and yeah. I learned from somebody on this podcast to, to, I finally bit the bullet and I bought a Breva. A yeah. Breva does really work for me if, if you get it right away. So I put a little bit on and I put it on a couple of times during the, during the day and it does actually alleviate it. But honestly, the other the other reason why I wanted to mention this is because it's it's twice in the last three four months that I felt them coming on. The last time was we had a week where we had a whole bunch of food brought to the radio station, just shit like garbage, like donuts and cookies, and and we were just eating like idiots after the show. The covered in and herpes. That no, that oh. week because I ate so poorly at work. I felt like I was getting another one that week too. So I just wanted to say, like, if you've got, and I've actually, I, I knew someone years ago that had the genital herpes, her real herpes, real herpes. Major and they herpes. were talking about when their lives, when they had stressed out, they would get a flare. Like, yeah, they, they would have to deal with that when they had. And I think I honestly, that's a combat. Now, when we mentioned it on the show this morning, we had a woman call the show and go, this is going to sound really, really weird, but masturbating. No, I'll get to that. Hang on. She said, I get them. And when I feel them coming on herpes, cold source. Okay. She takes a Q-tip, gets a little bit of ear, not like, not the yellow goopy stuff, gets some earwax and puts it on. 
Oh, get the fuck out of here. You, you, no, you make Shall that. You made that last part up. That no. is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know what you're doing. I Google dude, it. And you're watching you smile now. So I know you're full of shit. And what you're no. doing is you're trying to get everybody. And there should be a warning label against you. Dude, no. Twitter was ruined for two years because of guys like you. No. Where you're no. like. No. Stick a Q-tip in your earlobe and then rub it on your fucking mouth. Get a little earwax and put it on the herpes. That is the hey, Siri. Why? Let me. Why would you? No, that you can't tell people to put earwax on their fucking herpes. Yes. To, yeah. Hold on. Hey Siri, does earwax help with cold sores? Okay, I found this on the web for does earwax help with cold sores. Check it out. How to cure a cold sore with earwax. How to af can. how You're effective dumb. is applying earwax on a cold sore? This is urine therapy of 2022. Lindley's 100% right. He just checked in. This is urine therapy 2022. Everything. According to me. No, it's a thing. It's, it's, it's the dumbest thing. shit ever. It's not real. It's I a don't thing. You, no, it's not. No, it's not. You just said it's a thing and said that you brought it up on your phone and you didn't read it. So it's not a thing. Now you're just thing. you're just bailing out. No, you're it's your <laughs> earwax. And we had another woman call up. Now, this is a different conversation okay. and yeah, I'm not doing this. Yeah. But she said sperm as well. Oh, but that's for fuck's sakes. I mean, that that's difficult to do. I mean, I need access to it right when you get the tingle. I'm not sure <laughs> if it if mine will work or if I need a buddy's <laughs> and then, if I need and then there's that awkward, like, do I keep my glasses on? Like, cause, <laughs> cause it'll ruin them. <laughs> and I don't want to get any of my hair cause it's a bitch to get I out just, or so yeah. I've seen. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. I know. So, I, you, you don't want to get it from the tap. Then your I think, wax is, is a saying. little more, that that's a little I can wrap my head around that as opposed to getting down on my hands like on my <laughs> knees. <laughs> Holy fuck. And what if I make so, eye contact? She... <laughs> Just don't look at me. <laughs> hey, 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 Locke, can you help me with my herpes? Sure. Just don't look at me. <laughs> Stop looking at me. You're making this weird. It's going to take longer. <laughs> hey. hey, I think it's working. Stop looking at me. Why are you humming? <laughs> <laughs> that's not cure that doesn't cure that, that wasn't cure my things. idea i didn't come up with the sperm one that was oh, christina no. <laughs> yeah she said sperm cures a lot of things it does makes you taller <laughs> <laughs> makes you prettier and taller that's what i heard i don't i don't know it's one of those things it's really really good for you <laughs> anyway thanks for doing this and thank you for that cocktail recipe of how to get rid of her herpes Really appreciate it. Try all Ooh, three. Don't <laughs> at the same time. Well, you hit the abreva, you got the Q-tip going, you get a buddy yeah. in front of you. You'll get it somehow. I mean, one of those somehow one of those three things is gonna work. <laughs> so fucked. God, I haven't laughed like this in a long time. I think I just pissed my pants a little bit. Because uh, I'm very story, visual. Everybody. That's the problem. That's the problem. Because all I'm imagining is Dr. you and Rock. I. All I imagine is you and I at, at New Year's Eve for the big sugar show at River Creek Casino, which I'm coming to. And before we go out, lock going, Dean, uh, <laughs> I got a I got a, I got a little thing here. Would you got a heat right. coming in? But don't look at me. I'll help you, but don't fucking look at me again. It's the same. It's just it's how brothers help each other. It's like the same thing with getting stung by a sea urchin, right? You pee on my yeah. leg. It's like, okay, but don't look at me, dude. Uh, this one's a little more complicated. Yeah, it's a little more intimate. I, I anyway, get, I get the analogy. Thanks for the, I get the analogy. Yeah. 
you All need right. uh, you need other visuals for that to work. Thanks for doing this. Lock and cross nine five seven cruise FM. See you on Monday. Edmonton. Yeah, Monday. Uh, tomorrow right, we're brother. done. Um, always thank you to our men and women in uniform. I, both of us have uh, historical um, war people in our family trees. <laughs> it's like the best. We've got people who served. We've got people who served in World War II in our family see. trees, and uh, very serious people that uh, saved us from Nazism. So. Take, um, take a moment tomorrow if you can. Yeah, if you can. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. For our men and women that uh, fought for our freedoms and paid the ultimate sacrifice. That is Lock and Cross. 957 Cruise of M and Edmonton at Lock Cross on Twitter. Thanks, buddy. Take we'll care, talk Dean. to you soon. Oh, that was a good laugh. All right. Just don't look at me. <laughs> Thank you to you for watching. Thanks to everybody for being a part of the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, and thanks to our friends and partners over at Kivlaw.ca. If you're looking for people that do good law, uh, people that want you to succeed, people that have the ability to get you out of that jam, man, all you need to do is go to Kivlaw.ca. Use your defense attorneys that fight for your right to stay free and for you to defend yourself and keep that freedom. Uh, you don't want to do law on your own. You, you know, Self-representation is a bad idea. And legal issues never go away. They only go away when you employ good people who you know are on your side. My friend Rob Kivlikin, maybe one of the best people you'll ever meet. Trust me. Uh, lovely individual. His team fight for your right. And saying that they fight for it, it's an educational thing. Super comforting walking into his office. You got like... You got the, the weight of the legal world over your shoulders and you walk in. He's like, hey, man, let's come on in. Let's talk about it. We'll figure it out together. Uh, that's what you need. You need a partner in the legal world when you're up against it. And uh, Kivlaw does the best work in the business if you're in southern Ontario. Robert at Kivlaw.ca is his email address. Make sure you send him a note. Also, very special thank you to Ed at Ed's Fine Imports. We use his gitch. So should you. There's his website, edsfineimports.com. Now, why am I showing you his website? Great. They've got everything from blazers to sweaters to dress shirts, casual wear, shoes, socks, accessories, and more. And, of course, his Gitch, luxury branded boxer briefs, pouch in the front, everything from orange to purple to red to yellow to black. You've got it all, underwear uh, that is soft, stretchable, breathable, has its own pouch. The Prospect Premium Soft Stretch Model is all yours, and you can get a free one of these bad boys when you check out by using Gitch3 is your promo code, edsfineimports.com. Don't, don't, don't buy terrible underwear. Don't do it. There's a lot of people out there that are un not underwear savvy. We happen to be pretty underwear savvy here at DeanBlundell.com. And when we got into bed with these guys, we knew they were a Canadian-made company, and we knew they loved to make underwear. We didn't know they would make the definitive boxer brief, though. Had no idea. Now they're huge. So make sure you order today. EdsFineImports.com. Uh, Gitch3 is your promo code. They'll send them to you and you open them up. They come in this really cool little package, too. That's how you know they're luxury. The package has its own package, which is just incredible when you think about it. I love it. Love the underwear. You'll love the underwear. Again, go to EdsFineImports.com today. And, of course, last but not least, how about our friends over at Cantork? You know what I love is I love working with people that have great stories. These guys have one of the best stories in Canada when it comes to uh, being tool experts. Canada's assembly tool experts. Can Torque makes rugged, hardworking, beautiful torque wrenches like the best in the world. And let me get to that in just a second. Canada's leading industrial tool experts offering you the very best in sales service, rentals, calibration, maintenance, custom fabrication of industrial torque tools, fasteners and looseners. If you can imagine it, they make it. No matter the scale of your bolting project, they have your solution. Go to cantorque.com for more information. And again, the reason why I love Cantorque, he did something that nobody does anymore. He decided he, to incur more cost and bring all of his production back to Canada. He did that a couple of years ago. And his story's phenomenal. Just a community builder, a guy that wants to employ people in his neighborhood, a guy who brought outsourcing back to Canada to his benefit. Not, I mean, it's, it's like, it's going to cost me so much. But he did it because he loves the city of Edmonton, loves the community, loves his country. And he ships and does work all over the world, but it all comes out of Canada, which is super proud. I mean, that's just an incredible story in a day where everybody's like trying to get an angle. Not this guy, not Colin Livingston and his group. All they do is look for solutions with Canadians for people around the world, but specifically here in this country. If it's industrial size wrench needs, torque wrenches, assembly wrenches, they have it all. Go to cantorque.com today. Have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you being here. See you uh, Monday morning on this very program, uh, Monday at three o'clock. Uh, thanks to everybody for being here. Um, don't forget, sign up for a newsletter at deanblondell.com. 
And uh, make sure you subscribe to everything we do. You can get to uh, Apple, Google, Spotify, et cetera, for all of our podcasts. You can check us out on YouTube, Dean Blundell Show on YouTube, Dean Blundell TV on Twitch TV. Uh, and make sure you sign up for a newsletter at DeanBlundell.com. Super easy. Join the club. Have a great day. See you Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.